Hello my dear friends, myself Dr. Mega Soni. I am a physiotherapist. I have done my master in neurology and psychosomatic disorder. And I am working as an assistant professor in a physiotherapy college. Okay. So today I am going to cover a major ascending tract that are the dorsum column tracts. Okay. This is the most common tract just like a spinothalamic tract. It, it can be, it may be asked in a 15 marks of question. So starting with the tract. The dorsal column tract. The dorsal column tracts means the tracts which are passing from the posterior part of the spinal cord. So mainly there are two types of dorsal column tracts, fasciculus cuneatus and fasciculus gracilis. These two are a dorsal column type of tract. The another name of fascicular gracili is the tract of golds. The tract of gold. And the another name of fasciculus cuneatus is tract of burda. So these are the names of this tract. First, I'll cover the tract of gracilis or a fasciculus gracilis, and second, I'll cover the fasciculus cuneatus. Now, these both tracts are traveling parallel to each other. The functions are also same. The only difference is that the fasciculus gracilis carries the sensation from sacral and the lumbar region, whereas the fasciculus cuneatus carries the sensation from the upper part of thoracic and a cervical region. So starting with the track, starting with the track, first I would like to show you the anatomical part. This is the cross section of spinal cord at the L1 level. This is the cross section of spinal cord at the T1 level. This is medulla oblongata. Can you see these two nuclei? There are various nuclei situated in medulla oblongata. Uh, in that, the, mostly there are two nuclei. First is this, this red one is nucleus gracilis and this second one is nucleus cuneatus. These are situated uh, lower part of medulla oblongata. This is pons, this is midbrain, this is thalamus and this is the cerebral cortex. Now before going to the course of this track, First, I would like to again revise the posterior part of the spinal cord, the structure of spinal cord, because the situation of these tracts are totally based on the structure of spinal cord. As you have, as you have seen in my previous lecture, in a posterior part of spinal cord, the uh, posterior medium septum is situated. Can you see this is the posterior medium septum, this is posterior intromedial lateral uh, sulcus and this is posterior lateral sulcus. So because of this sulcus and septum, the whole posterior part of spinal cord, posterior white column is divided into two parts. This is the medial part and this one is the lateral part. So the first track that is fasciculus gracilis. Fasciculus gracilis is situated on the medial part of the spinal cord or you can also say it is situated between posterior median sulcus and the posterior intromedial sulcus and the second tract that is fasciculus cuneatus this fasciculus cuneatus is situated in the lateral part of spinal cord means lateral to the uh, fasciculus gracilis so it is situated lateral over on the posterior white column clear with this now we start with the course of the fasciculus gracilis. So, fasciculus gracilis mainly carries the sensation or like deep and the cortical sensation. All of you know deep sensation are proprioception, position of the joint, kinesthesia, movement of the joint and the vibration. And the cortical sensations are fine touch, lo uh, tactile localization, two point discrimination and stereognosis. Okay? So, this all sensations are carried by this track. So, whenever you do any movement, or whenever you hold any object, this receptor situated within the joints are stimulated. Okay. And this receptor will be converted this energy into the action potential. And this track will be carried to the posterior part of the spinal cord. So, it will go to the posterior part of the spinal cord at the level of dorsal root ganglion. Now, this tract is different from the other ascending tract. How? The other is ascending tracts are originated from the posterior grey horn cell, from the second order neuron. But this tract is the only tracts which are originated from the first order neuron, that is dorsal root ganglion. So, this is the first order neuron as well as the origin of fasciculus gracilis tract. Clear with this? After taking origin, it enters into the posterior grey horn cell. Now, this tract does not synapse at the level of spinal cord. Means, it does not form second order neuron at the level of spinal cord. 
at the level of spinal cord this track will go to the same side it does not cross at the level of spinal cord so after going to posterior gray horn cell immediately it enters into the medial part of posterior white column clear with this as this is the fasciculus gracilis it carries the sensation in the cervical region then it goes to the various segment to the spinal cord and then finally it enters into the nucleus of medulla oblongata nucleus gracilis which is the nucleus situated in medulla oblongata now this tract terminates at the level of nucleus gracilis which is situated in medulla oblongata here it forms second order neuron so it synapses at this level and it forms the second order neuron so the second neuron of this tract is nucleus gracilis at the level of medulla oblongata clear with this now before going further i would like to tell you about the course of fasciculus scimitis because from here this both tract are traveling together so we'll move forward to the fasciculus scimitis whenever you do any joint movement or whenever you hold any object the receptor will be stimulated okay the sensation will be carried to the posterior root ganglion which is the first order neuron and this tract also originated from the first order neuron dorsal root ganglion after after going to the after uh, reaching at the level of dorsal root ganglia it enters into the posterior gray horn cell and then immediately it enters to the lateral part of the white column so can you see this tract is situated lateral to the uh, lateral to the fasciculus gracilis tract then it and as it carries the sensation from the upper part of body like cervical region and upper thoracic region and then it goes to the same side of medulla oblongata and it terminates at the nuclear nucleus cunatus which is again the second order neuron so the nucleus gracilis and cunatus are second order neuron the uh, neuron for this tract okay after that it this tract synapses with the another fiber and this fibers are called as arcuate internal arcuate fibers clear these are the internal arcuate fibers the fibers which are originated from the nuclei of medulla oblongata this arcuate fibers are a sensory fiber and this fiber now will decussate to the opposite side of medulla oblongata and it will reach to the pons level so this both fiber are called as a internal arcuate fiber the fibers which are originated from the nuclei of medulla oblongata and this fiber are sensory fiber okay so this fibers will decussate to the opposite side and it will reach at the level of pons region this fiber are internal arcuate fibers as this tract are terminated at the level of nuclei okay from here the another fibers are originated there are internal arcuate fibers and this fibers are sensory fiber and it will decussate to the opposite side of pons okay after going to pons it enters into the medulla oblongata and sorry it enters into the midbrain this is the midbrain okay so this fiber from pons to medulla oblongata this fiber are called as medial labniscus okay this fibers are called as a medial lamniscus clear with this after going to midbrain it enters into the vpl nucleus of thalamus this portion is the thalamus so it enters into the vpl nucleus of thalamus and from this is the third order neuron for this tract and from the vpl uh, nucleus of thalamus it goes to the sensory cortex area parietal lobe Okay, so this is all about the course of the tract. Okay, so these tracts are passing towards the same side of the spinal cord. It decussate at the level of medulla oblongata. Now, uh, the function of this tract as it carries the sensation of proprioception, kinesthesia, vibration, stereognosis, fine touch, tactile localization, and all of you know the posterior part. the posterior white column consists of highly myelinated fiber and they are high in velocity means this need, uh, sensation needs to be carry quickly to the central nervous system this tract is also called as a modern type of tract okay now the uh, lesion of this tract 
see the important part is the lesion okay if the damage is at the level of posterior white color if the damage is at the level of posterior white color so you may find lesion in towards the same side or a opposite side think if you find the lesion at the level of posterior white column you will definitely find a lesion towards the same side why because this tract do not synapse at the level of spinal cord it do not form the second order neuron and they tract do not cross to the opposite side at the spinal cord uh, at the level of spinal cord so uh, if there is any damage into posterior white column you will find all the loss of sensation towards the same side not the opposite side because this tract is decussated at the level of medulla oblongata so the lesion in lesion same side loss of kinesthesia loss of proprioception loss of vibration sense a stereognosis loss of uh, fine touch like loss of two point discrimination okay so this is all about the tract now we'll just uh, see the difference between these two tract okay fasciculus gracilis is called as tract of bull fasciculus cuneate is called as tract of bull origin of this tract or the first order neuron is dorsal root ganglion and the origin of this tract is also a dorsal root ganglion the situation it is situated posterior white collar but towards the medial side whereas it is situated in a posterior white collar but towards lateral side the second order neuron of this tract is nucleus gracilis uh, or nucleus gracilis that is situated in medulla oblongata and the second order neuron for fasciculus cuneatus is nucleus cuneatus which is situated in medulla oblongata the third order neuron for this tract is vpl of thalamus the third order neuron of this tract is vps of thalamus these are the cross fiber at the level of medulla but uncrossed fiber uncrossed fiber at the level of spinal cord okay the function function it carries deep sensation as well as the cortical sensation and this also carries the deep sensation cortical sensation and lesion if you find any lesion at the level of spinal cord you will find loss of sensation towards the same side not towards the opposite side hope you have understood my lecture if you have any doubt you can write on the comment section thank you very much now we'll cover the next uh, chapter corticospinal tract